Hello again from Panic Props. Today we're going to work on some bottles for your scare site or your home. Create an atmosphere throughout the area. Um, some things to look at. Bring some interest to your your site, your location. Uh, I ran down to the local store, just picked up some unique bottles that I could find. Uh, the ones you would want to find are um, ones with a lot of designing on them, details. Just, just unique um, bottles for whatever your interest might be. They don't have to match, and what I was going for is bottles that were not identical this time for this this video. So what I came across was these two bottles here. Uh, have a lot of detail on them. They work great for what I'm thinking. This one has a little handle on it. It also has the cork as well as these two. This one was actually a white grape bottle, but I took off the labels and that'll work really well for the idea I have for that one. So the other items that you will need for this one will be a printer and computer. Uh, the printer that I, or the computer I used had a word program. So that's what I used for making my decals or my labels for the bottles here. Another thing you're gonna need is just your basic general glue, um, something to coat over the glue to coat over your label as well so that uh, if they were to get wet they will not get damaged the printing will not come off uh, some paper uh, specifically you don't want to use basic white paper because the bottles won't look aged or unique it'll just it'll ruin the whole project so uh, I recommend finding a unique type of paper maybe something that's browned aged looking craft stores have a lot of options for that the paper I found for this one happens to be a watercolor designed paper, so I'll show you that in a bit. And then, um, anything else you can think of for the bottles. One of these bottles, I'm going to put some rope on, so that'll work out. It'll give it a unique look too, so. Uh, beyond that, just anything else you can think of for the bottles, and we will go from there. To start out, what I did was I opened up my printer and took a piece of paper and I drew an arrow on it to find out exactly how the paper goes through the printer so that I know which side of the paper that the ink prints on and what direction it prints, if it's going to be upside down or right side up when it comes out. So I drew an arrow on my paper and found out how exactly that worked. And then what I did is I used that piece of paper and I printed on it. I printed my labels out using the Word program that I created them with. And uh, that way I know how the paper is going to come through the printer. In order to use the Word program, I was able to create unique fonts for what I was designing for my ideas. And I was able to also add images. So it gives you multiple options. You can change the font size. You can center align it. So it's going to be perfectly centered on your labels. And uh, there's many different options you can use. If you want to use colored ink, colored font, you can go with that. So, um, yeah, there's, there's many different options you can use for the Word program. And it's uh, very helpful for creating these labels. So, once I had my printout here, I was able to attach my watercolor paper to this page itself. That way I knew that the uh, printing would be centered on the labels and I could change the color of the labels for each of these. So um, I started with the center one here, placed my color here that I wanted, taped it on nice and tight so it wouldn't fold up inside the printer and cause a jam. And then I would tape the next one over here and tape the bottom one here, adhere the sides, and set it in the printer using my arrow. So I knew that I had to line it up upside down with the arrow pointing in and my labels printed out where they should have been. So once I got to that point, I took my labels that I printed with my watercolor paper, and then I trimmed the edges to the size of the label for each bottle. So that works out for unique designs, shapes, and each bottle could have a unique label on it. And that will work for any bottle, as long as 
they don't have too much designing on it. That's the problem I run into with this green bottle here. So what I did is I took a paint and I painted the designing on this bottle. And so that one is already done. The other ones need the labels right here. So what I'm going to use is a basic general glue and I'm going to place those labels on now. And from that point, next step will be to take the corks, possibly use a coffee stain to darken them, make them look aged. And I'm going to add non-toxic liquid. I'm just going to use basic water to these bottles. And I'm going to add water or food coloring to these bottles to give them the unique color that I'm looking for for each of these labels. And uh, give them each their own personality for the site. So we will go to that step now. We're back now. I have completed uh, putting my items, water, coloring into the bottles now. And our results are pretty decent. Uh, the spirit bottle, which I had to paint, what I did with that one is I actually added some cobwebs inside. It makes it look kind of smoky, you know, like some spirits inside of there that you could release whenever you need for potion or spells or, you know, you got your, your spirits in this bottle. We also have the rat poison, which we've mixed up now. The coffee staining of the cork worked out pretty decent. It's got a darker look, looks a little more aged, because it gives it a better feel. But we got a rat poison, you know, the water, green food coloring, corks on real tight so it won't stain anything. The final piece I'm going to do is a piece of the brown rope around here and uh, that'll be that'll finish that one up real nice for the uh, the look I'm going for then we have our bottle of vampire blood you can't beat that we got the bubbles at the top shake it up use some old zombie blood for inside give some red streaks to the bottle so gives the blood a, a thicker appearance because it's still at the top and then I used the red food coloring for the bottom. So the water is full of food coloring. The very bottom will collect sort of, kind of like blood clots, I suppose, with the zombie blood in here. And then the staining. So it gives it a really good feel for the vampire blood. And the last one we have here is the Tears of the Innocent Children. With this bottle, it was green. I didn't want to give it a whole lot of color because, you know, Innocent children's tears are pretty clear, but I did add a slight blue tint one half of a droplet to this water And it gives it a little difference in color between the green bottle and the tears So that works out very well the last things last steps. I'm going to do is get a little bit of over like uh, excessive glue from smoothing the label on so I'm going to wipe that off real lightly with a damp cloth That'll clean that up real nice. And then I'm going to use a, a clear coat on this to keep the labels from getting any, getting any uh, smearing, staining, uh, any of the ink to rub off from any possible water spillage, things like that. And uh, so there we are. We have our four bottles. Very simple project to do. Very cheap, easy, quick. Could be something fun to do with the kids and uh, makes for a great great project for the afternoon it'll look good around the, the house um, again remember to use non-toxic items inside the bottles we don't want anybody taking off a cork or a cap and taking a drink thinking they're going to be drinking the tears of innocent children and get something ingested that's toxic so i did put toxic on the rat poison obviously rat poison is toxic but um, it's just the, the water in there. So enjoy. Um, if you liked the video, give, give, uh, give a like to it, uh, share it up, and uh, make sure you subscribe. Panic Props. Hope you enjoyed.